What an extraordinary reminder that anything that we view as negative is a launch pad into something more positive, a better version of what we are currently experiencing. I've just had the absolute joy of being in conversation with David Strickle. He is a speaker, an author, a medium, and he channels the stream. What I loved is he really broke down the fact that we're all connected. We're all connected to something greater than ourselves. He calls it the source. I like to call it the source. You can call it God, whatever you choose. Our intuition is us channeling. In order to get into that state, we need to be in a state of of high vibration, basically joy. We need to be in a joyous state to be connected to something that is feeding us this eternal wisdom that we're all seeking, and especially right now. If we find ourselves in a lower vibration, as you said, the key is to notice when we're in those lower vibrations, i.e. when we're getting triggered, to notice it, to feel what, whatever's there, and then to take ourselves in these small micro shifts. He didn't use that word, but basically, small rungs up a ladder, take ourselves back into that higher state of vibration where solutions are available. You know, right now in the world, those that are experiencing anger can't see the solutions. So the key is to get into that higher vibrational state for solutions, for for clarity, for us to experience the freedom that we're all seeking. It was truly a remarkable conversation. He is one wise being, and as he said, The stream is wiser than he, but he uses the stream's messages and there are a number of core messages in his books to actually teach and for us to use the tools that are being given to him via the stream. I would invite you to tune in. If you enjoy this conversation, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also check out all my videos and resources at lisawinicky.com and I hope you enjoy this conversation as much as I did. Welcome, David Strickle. Thank you for having me. It's really good to be here. (laughs) So I often do an intro, as I was saying beforehand, but what I would love to do is to pass the microphone over to you and for you to share Mm -hmm. a little bit about your work as The Stream, and then we'll go back, because what I'd love to do is, is, is rewind as to how this came about. Like, I know when I've read, reading your book, this knowing of the stream of being connected to something greater than yourself was there present for you a long time ago. So if we can just start with now, what is the stream? The stream is a stream of consciousness that is the core of source energy that actually flows to all of us. It is original thought. It is the source of all creation. And so you as the stream channel this source of energy, this stream, I should say, stream of energy. And you're saying, so for a lot of people, I imagine there are a lot of people listening to this conversation already and they're like, what do you mean we're connected to something greater? Because for me, for many years, I was disconnected from that. So when we're disconnected, we're not even aware of that that stream. We are all strands of consciousness that are part of a collective. And it's pretty easy to understand that, okay, we are the collective consciousness of humanity. We, we developed in these bodies and evolved over time in a very similar way. You know, there's certainly some differences, but our similarities far outweigh our differences. So therefore, mm. if you are thinking in terms of the consciousness that designed us and created us, it is not exactly like what we're taught in religion, but obviously something thought all of this into being. And my teachings and and what I offer from the streams teachings, and there are little differences there, because all of my teachings are based on the things that I have learned from the stream. The stream is far wiser than I am, but I've taken their teachings that I've been receiving my whole life, and I've created a practice and a set of teachings that are more humanized around it, Mm. because the humanized version of what they are offering is very easy to comprehend and apply in your life to improve your life. And that's what the teachings are all about. It's not just what color are our beings on other planets and all this fun (laughs) stuff people like to ask, that kind of consciousness. Mm. It really comes back to we are human beings experiencing planet Earth as human beings at this time. 
and what are the tools that we need to improve the collective of humanity and what are the tools that we need to improve our own personal existence, our own personal experience of this. And I love that because it feels very grounded in the sense that it's, you know, you're, you're streaming a, a, um, consciousness, but in order for it to enrich our lives, and I know the purpose for everything you do is around joy and freedom and so forth. So it's how can we, how can we receive this wisdom and this experience in order to open us and expand us to these, these things that we're here to experience? And the first thing is really understanding that we are all part of it. And we're taught so many different things mm. across all of humanity, from religion to new age to science, all of these different things. And there's nothing wrong with any of those things. They were all our attempt to understand our eternal nature. I, I, mm -hmm. What created us, what thought us up, what designed planet Earth, what designed our bodies in this perfect way that mm -hmm. allows us to function the way that we do as, as intelligent beings on this planet. Something did that. And atheists tend to believe that nothing did that, it just <laughs> happened. And religious people tend to believe that a deity did that and that mm -hmm. this deity needs to be obeyed. Mm -hmm. And spiritual people tend to believe that in fact, spirituality is a big tent, tend to believe, you know, all sorts of different things as mm. far as what created us. But I like to use the term source mm. because source is this all encompassing creative energy that created the entire universe. And if you want to label that God or your higher self or, or whatever, there's no judgment in any of that. Mm -mm -mm -mm. But something did design us, something created the universe. There's a consciousness out there and that flows to all of us but we're told that it doesn't. We're told to live in fear. We're told to mm -hmm. behave in a certain way. We're told to live our lives a certain way, depending on our gender and our race and our, our national origin and our religion and all of these different things. Mm -hmm. But really we're all eternal beings. And I do believe that our core, we get that. And I've even acknowledged that maybe it's just our ego that wants that to be true so badly that we construct this eternal idea but there are so many people that get in touch with themselves on a very deep level that come to understand our eternal nature. And so mm -hmm. there's something there. And if you take that little something and really start exploring that and at every turn, go inward to your own inner guidance and say, okay, is this something that I believe because I was told to believe it? Mm -hmm. Or is this something I truly know innately? And our innate knowing always leads us to desiring freedom and joy and kindness and other high vibrational things. Mm. When we're in a state of less than that, mm. then we're actually down in, in this lower vibration of fear and judgment and all these other things that are part of the human condition. Mm. But we can move beyond that. And we all desire the same things at the end of the day. Just very often we believe that money and power mm -hmm. and lording over other people and all of these other things are a path to joy. But we notice the people that have the money and the power very often are the most unhappy among us. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean that money is necessarily a bad thing. No. And it doesn't mean that power is, is innately a bad thing because we all have power. We have mm -hmm. the power to create our reality and we do. But when you need your power to be better than someone else or in control of someone else, that's always rooted in lower vibrational thinking. And that's why you see people who are in power are always so angry. Mm. You, you know, the people that have the most power seem to be the most angry and living in the lowest vibrational state. Even if they're living in luxury, they're always unhappy. Mm. Have you noticed that? Yeah. That's so interesting to me that, that people that have so much, so often, especially people that have power, not just money and material things, but the ones that have true power are always in anger and fighting to keep it and so worried about losing it that their whole existence becomes about staying in power. Mm. But the power is not even making them happy. It's just their version of happiness that is really a separation from. Mm. Goodness, there's so much there, you know, what that reminded me of, you talk about the, the spiral, the vibration, the, the spiral, the vibrational spiral. Can you speak a bit about that? Because obviously you Certainly. just were talking about that essentially. <clears throat> Something that everyone can identify with instantaneously from these teachings mm. is that we all have an emotional spiral. Mm. There, there are days that our emotions are high. We are feeling good. We're feeling positive. 
we're having a good day. And there are other days where our, for no apparent reason, our vibration is not so high. Our emotions are not so high. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Vibration and emotion are really interchangeable. Mm -hmm. We identify mm -hmm. things as emotion. And, and often you hear the term vibe. But then when you go over to vibration, people step back a little bit and say, they well, what do, is this vibration? They? <laughs> yeah, you know, crazy. no one's vibrating. No one's shaking. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, well vibe, just think of vibration more in terms of vibe. People have a good mm. vibe or a bad mm. vibe or a high vibe. You mm. got a bad vibe off of that person. Mm. We all get that. Mm. We all experience that. We've, ex we've encountered people who, without any verbal exchange, we instantaneously get a vi bad vibe from. Mm. And that can be rooted in our, our higher vibration intuition, or it can be rooted in our lower vibration fear because we're judging them based on something other than what they're saying. Mm -hmm. And so we're immediately taking that to a lower vibrational place. And one thing that I love to teach about this vibrational spiral is that there's contrast in everything. There's positive and negative in everything. I love this. There, I'm so glad yeah. you're going to touch on this because I just want to share that I think a lot of us in this space understand the law of polarity. Like we cognitively understand it. But when I was reading something of yours over the past week, I was, I really got it, David. And I want to thank you right now. I really got the, that negative and positive has to, it coexists. And yes. that without, without the negative and positive, without the negative, and I think it's really fitting in this time that we're in, without the negative, it doesn't allow us to expand into something, into what we desire. Right. I love yeah, that. All, all positive is inspired by negative. And a lot of people, where people tr tend to get stuck, especially in spiritual teachings, mm. is this idea that we're, we're marching towards some utopian society of perfection where we're all just going to be at peace and agree with one another. And I understand the desire for peace. I understand the desire to solve all of our problems that we have. Mm. But I also notice that no matter what we do and what we create, and look at all the technology that we've created on our planet in a very short amount of time, look at the expansive technology that we have created on earth. Mm. And notice that we're not getting to the finish line of solving all of our problems with it. It seems to just create new problems. We solve something and something <laughs> else pops up. Well, that is the true mm. universal process of creation. That positive is inspired by negative. And the negative, the judgment of negative is a human ego-based judgment of negative mm. because we love these lives because we don't fully trust and believe that there's something beyond this so we really get stuck in this current life that we're in, and sometimes so much so that we're so fearing of death that we will do all kinds of crazy things and allow ourselves to be separated from freedom and joy out of fear of death. Mm. And more importantly, we allow ourselves to be separated from freedom and joy out of fear of just plain old disappointment. That's a big one, I reckon. I, I, well, I'm saying big because I, I experienced that for a long time. So you know, keeping the lid on things or not wanting to feel it in case it was taken away or I couldn't, I couldn't sustain it because I myself was one of those people you talked about. I was believing in, I was, you know, when I experienced enlightenment, I was going to live in this perfect, harmonious world. I, I know these, these things, these words came out of my mouth and people often question me. So I really, really get that now. Like I really get that, as I said, that the, that it must that it coexists. That that we can't have one without the other. And you look at this time and now, and I've spoken about this particularly during COVID. Is I mean, I haven't used it in so much the law of polarity, but there have been so many extraordinary opportunities that have come out of this time by resetting. And I know you that use that word, and I want to go into that more. But using this as a reset to go in and see how is this serving me? What would, what would I like in my life? How would I like my relationships to be? What would I like to be doing each day in, in work? Is this actually what my heart, you know, what my heart desires for me? You were going to say Coming something. to understand the, 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 the process of creation, which we, we started out speaking about the spiral. So we have this, this emotion, which is the same thing as our vibration, which fluctuates up and down the spiral all the time. Mm. Polarity is the thing that is drawing us up and down this virtual vibrational spiral. And polarity exists to deliver a mix of positive and negative experiences in our lives. This is why you can learn about law of attraction and positive thinking and still not manifest everything that you want mm. and still have problems because mm. life is not perfect. 
And we are not racing toward perfection because if we achieve perfection, we will cease to be. There's no point in, in, in physical being other than expansion. And the expansion is delivered through the experiencing of positive and negative. So every time we experience something negative, we have an opportunity to raise our vibration where all the solutions are. When we're up in that good feeling place, things get solved very easily. Have you ever noticed that you have a problem, there's something that you're working on and you just can't get it, it won't work. You know, you're, you're trying to figure out something on your computer or in your business. And you step away from it for a little while, you know, maybe you just go have lunch go do something that is enjoyable just because you can't take it anymore. Then you go back to it and you solve it and it just solves so easily. And you think, gosh, you know, why couldn't I get this before? It was so easy. Well, it's because you went and raised your vibration and the solutions to everything. Mm. Every problem in life is in higher vibration. Mm. This is why anger and fear and resentment and all of these lower vibrational things, our reaction to our problems at best is a step one reaction. And the reason that we see so many problems that don't get solved, that keep coming back again and again and again in our lives mm -hmm. and for humanity as a collective is because we go into that anger space and we're angry about something. We see this right now, I'm in the United States and we have all these protests going on. And mm -hmm. we get into this space of anger and we stay in anger. Mm -hmm. And then eventually polarity pulls us out of anger naturally. And then we're out of anger, we wanna feel better, and it's easier to just forget about that thing and move on from it and not be angry about it anymore. It's a, it's a coping mechanism to just kind of forget about it. Let's forget all about that. And that's why we have the same problems, not just the United States, but everywhere that keep recurring over and over again for decades mm -hmm. and don't really get solved because we stay in step one of anger. But well, we can apply that in our lives as well. Mm -hmm. So we have the problem of whatever it is, you know, a, a, a chronic illness, or not enough money, or being in jobs that we don't like, or abusive relationships, or no relationship, whatever it is that you're looking to change, as long as you're in that low vibration, resentment, anger, fear, vibration, you're going to keep that thing recurring in your life mm. until you move on to a higher vibrational perspective of it and allow the solution to flow in. That is the key to solving any problem in life, regardless of what it is. <laughs> I'm nodding my head like this, David, because I had an ex exact direct experience of what happened yesterday. I was working with Laura, who I introduced you to before, who works with me, and we just couldn't, we were stuck. There was, we were in the problem. And I was like, okay, let's stop. Let's get out of this space. Let's draw a circle and we're gonna step into, I call it, a, we call it the creator circle, which is basically connected to something greater than ourselves. Straight away, we stepped in, we experienced the shift. So obviously upward spiral and the solution, it was just there, it just, it happened effortlessly. And so what you're saying is it, it does take, it does take obviously awareness to notice when you're down operating in that lower vibrational space in order to actually then raise your vibration to come into um, clarity, because we're, you know, we're in a state of confusion when we're down there, aren't we? There's nothing, nothing makes sense. So what an incredible thing to be talking about right now, given there is a lot of anger and rage. And there is, I live in, we live in Australia and we're in stage four, which is essentially we've got curfews at night, you know, nothing's open except for takeaway. And I've stayed out of it because I didn't want to give my attention and energy to it, not because I don't care, but I want to give my attention and energy to things that will actually contribute to the planet and probably, it, well, not probably, raising the frequency of the planet. But there is a lot of that. So what do you say to, I mean, what can you say to people that are in that space? Well, you've probably just said it, that really stay well, in that and, space. And that's the thing is if it, I, I am on social media a lot. I love interacting with people mm. that haven't experienced these teachings before. Mm. Uh, my favorite platform right now is TikTok. I love TikTok. <laughs> I heard uh, that. I a, yeah, I love, I love TikTok because in a minute I can, I can mm. uh, deliver a, a teaching in one minute and it reaches hundreds of thousands of people. It's, it's, it's incredible. It's an incredible platform and people interact and there's a lot of talking. And of course, there's a whole lot of, I get it. I thank you or give me a little more information. And then every once in a while it's, well, what about this, this, and this? How can you say that you attract everything? Why would I attract this thing I didn't want? Why would a child attract being abused? Well, hmm. they're not understanding law of attraction. It's, it's not about sitting and, and wishing for something and having it materialize. I know that there are some popular teachings out there that sell lots of books that sort of 
describe it that way. And that is actually perfection too, because that that simplistic description of it brought a lot of people along in the idea that they create their own reality. Mm. The problem is you get into trying to be intentional in creating your own reality, and then you hit some walls with it. The big stuff, the relationship, the improvement of health, the money, the big job, the new business. And you think, okay, this is BS. It doesn't work. It's not true. Mm. You know, it's, it's just a bunch of crap. I, I hear that a lot. Mm. But they haven't really gone deep enough into it to really get it. And it, it took me some time to really, I comprehended law of attraction as early as before age six. I understood it as fundamentally as far as you create your own reality via your thoughts. But getting into the blockages and the flow of polarity and, and the gift of low vibration, that took many, many years for me to really figure out. And when I figured it out for my life, and started transforming every area, losing 100 pounds, getting off of, uh, uh, I was addicted to painkillers. I was in a horrible relationship. Um, I had money, but I wasn't happy. I, I was one of these people that knew how to manifest money and material things from a very young age. And I lived materially like a very wealthy person from the time I was a teenager, even though I lived in a minimum wage, you know, very poor single parent household, I lived like a wealthy person all of my teenage into my adult life. Mm -hmm. And I got to a point where I understood, came to understand that, wow, I've got all this stuff and I'm still not happy. What's going on? Hmm. Then I had to go a lot deeper. And when I went a lot deeper, then everything changed. And I did teach myself how to lose the weight, how to improve my uh, chronic back pain to the point where it's just gone. And, and I'm off of pain uh, killers and have been for a decade now. Amazing. Get out of the bad relationship into the relationship of the love of my life that I know I will be with for the rest of my life. Mm. And really fix all of these things that we all want to fix in our lives. Now, mm. that doesn't mean that my current life is perfect, but it's pretty damn close. You know, <laughs> I, I live where I want to live. I do what I want to do. I'm happy. I'm healthy. Mm. I, I have a great life. There are things that I still want to manifest. There are obstacles that I place in my path. And with these tools, I know how to solve my obstacles very, very quickly and, and move on to new creation and the solving of them. And I understand that that's my expansion. In fact, every time I solve something, I now use it in my teachings. Mm. And I still manifest obstacles, but a lot less than I used to. Mm. And I will tell you that the, the, my favorite manifestation, and everything is a manifestation, my favorite intentional manifestation is that serendipitous joy of meeting someone new that I feel like I've known forever. Mm. And in creating these happy experiences in little experiences. You know, I, I've flown on private jets and stayed in five-star resorts and eaten great food and drink, drink expensive wine and done all these beautiful things that I do appreciate. But these little moments that we string together in our regular daily lives actually create more joy than that event, than that vacation, than that one memorable event that we create. Because if you're, you're depending on the vacation or the event to be your happiness, mm. and then everything else is drudge work on the way, mm. then you're not really living in joy. And, and you know where your vibration is if you're in joy. Mm. If you're in less than joy, you're actually in low vibration. Mm. And the thing about polarity is it takes you up and down. And until you get really tuned into your vibration, you don't know that you're down until you're triggered. Yep. But you would have never been triggered if you weren't down to begin with. Vibration, polarity will take your vibe down. But your transgressor energy in your life is what triggers you and holds you down there. And creates all of the negative stuff in your life. That's the unwanted people, circumstances, events that you sort of latch on to. And you think that they're learning experiences. But really, these learning experiences are actually your blocks. So you, you have an experience of something negative in your life. And you say to yourself, I'm never going to trust and do that again. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to let myself get hurt that way again. And in your ego desire to hold yourself away from pain creates this block. So you're never going to take this chance again. You're never going to fall in love again. You're never going to start a business again. You're never going to invest in something again because you lost money. And then you, you actually create this block for yourself that blocks you from everything that you want in your life. Because instead of just letting that be a negative manifestation, a clarifying event, if you will, and then going back up in vibration and solving it and growing in the solving of it, you let that define you. Mm. And we all do this. Mm. And when you stop doing that, you really start to change your life. When you mm. think, gosh, I've been burned before. I may be burned again. It doesn't matter. It's all part of this magical flow of my life journey. Mm. How much better does that feel 
then never again. I'm never going to love again. I'm never going to invest in a business again. I'm never going to spend money on a car again. I'm never going to take a vacation. You know, all these things that we tell ourselves. It's, it's funny, right? <laughs> it's, so lim- it's so limited, isn't it? And as soon as you said it, it was like, it's so, it's so literally so freeing. It's just like there's no attachment to it. Any of it, it's just like you experience it and there's no attachment. Because you, when you say, when you talked about the block, we create a block, well, we then create, we not only create a block, but am I right in saying we also create more of what we don't want? Sure, because that block is the thing you harken back to and that becomes your new vibration. Mm. So when you are, and I'll use a more extreme example, when you suffer abuse as a child and you, you have that opinion of yourself that you adapt because you were abused, you carry that vibration into adulthood. And that's why people that were abused as children very often become abused as, as adults in some mm. way, because they have that never again vibration. Mm. They're focusing on what was bad and what they don't want. And they end up manifesting and attracting more of that in their lives. Now, mm. this is the point where a lot of people that are new to this will say, well, you're blaming the victim. Yep. Well, I'm not blaming the victim. That's not what attraction is. In fact, what I want to do is empower the victim mm. to stop this damn cycle and mm. not attract anything of that nature again mm. by focusing on self-love, self-appreciation, and disconnecting from the need of another in their lives. And then in that high vibrational space of self-love and self-appreciation and not needing another, then you're actually in the best position to attract someone into your life Mm. that is your high vibrational match that feels the same way about you. Mm. But when you've got this active vibration of you're not worthy, you're not good enough, uh, somebody abused you in some way, and it's still active and you're still hearkening back to the negative aspects of that, then you're more likely to attract more of that. And there's proof of that all around us. Mm everywhere and I think this is a a perfect time if you wouldn't mind rewinding rewinding and sharing a little bit about your your past your story and how because the work that you do now obviously is as a direct result of everything you've overcome and the wisdom of the stream in now giving you um, which we'll talk about in time is tire and the four pillars of time what you run in the boot camp is extraordinary I love the four pillars but can we go back and rewind and you just share a little bit about where you've come from certainly so as I, I believe I said at the beginning I've had this knowing that has been with me as long as I can remember I remember being prior my father left when I was six and I remember my parents prior to age six sort of uh, speaking you know, badly about someone that, ha- that drove a luxury car mm. and saying something to the effect of, you know, what did she do to get that? We'll never have anything like that. And I remember very distinctly really loving the car. I've been a car fanatic my whole life. And I really just thought the car was so cool. It was shiny and there was little buttons <laughs> everywhere. And, you know, it was just the nicest thing I'd ever seen in, in terms of a car. Mm-hmm. And me thinking immediately, that's not true. You can have anything that you want. You're worthy of anything that you believe you're worthy of, and and you can have anything that you want to have in this life. I remember thinking that before six. So flash forward, you know, my father left when I was six. My mother uh, never recovered from my father leaving her. Uh, Was, I would say, undiagnosed mental illness for the rest of her life. And she was pretty mentally and physically abusive to me uh, as a child. The mental part was a lot more damaging to me than the physical part. And she really, the the bottom line was she never wanted to have children. She fought for custody of my brother and I. And then she turned and said, I never wanted you in the first place. (laughs) She just wanted custody to get back at my dad. And she got full custody uh, of both of us. So life with her was rough. And Mm. by the time I was a teenager, my older brother really kind of got out of the scenario, always worked, just, just separated himself from it as much as possible. I was sort of stuck with her. And I had a rough teenage time for sure. And I remember her telling me to kill myself. You need to commit suicide. You just need to kill yourself. You're worthless. And so that was the vibe that I lived with. And by the time I was uh, in high school, I was never a good student. I was dyslexic. That was not diagnosed. I lived in the South of the United States. The schools are not the greatest there. And I sort of just talked my way through school and charmed my way through school, if you will, until I got to high school didn't graduate on time, decided to go take an equivalency, what we call in the United States a GED, uh, which is not looked upon that favorably. I didn't go to any type of university whatsoever, uh, but I didn't get out of high school on time. And I actually ended up starting my own business at 19. Mm. But prior to that, I remember in 1982 at age 14, telling my older brother in great detail about the law of attraction. I didn't call it that. 
I thought I invented this thing that if I believe that I am something, I will become that something. Wow. And I just knew it. And I remember telling him, I remember where I was standing to this day. And that's been many, many years ago, mm. telling him this and him thinking that I was insane and <laughs> told me to go read my Bible and pray. <laughs> and so I just knew that I, that, that my knowing was, was correct. And by the time I was in high school, the next few years, I was living the life of, of one of the wealthy kids in town, even though I was not. Mm. You know, we lived in a two bedroom, very rundown apartment with roaches and, and prostitutes in the neighborhood and all, all sorts of stuff. But I drove a brand new car and I had nice clothes and a nice watch. And I always had money to do the things that I wanted to do. Everybody mm -hmm. thought I was one of the rich kids. And I, to this day, can't really tell you how all that came to be. It just did. Mm. So I manifested material things very early on. And I manifested my own business at 19. I started as a real estate developer. I didn't have any money. I started as a real estate developer with other people's money. And I did that for the first several years of my adult life. And then that sort of played out. And then I got into the corporate world and really educated myself via the internet. Thank thankfully, the internet came along around mm. that time. And I was able to educate myself. And I ended up in a very high level corporate position in a publicly held company, a Fortune 500 company, where I reported directly to the CEO. And a lot of people that reported to me had to have master's degrees to report to me. Wow. <laughs> Yet I barely got out of high school. So that was the kind of the trajectory of my adult life. My spiritual life, though, I was raised Christian. I questioned that from day one. I was mm -hmm. asked not to return to Sunday school as a small child because I questioned too much. Uh, <laughs> I had lots of questions and none of it made sense to me. So mm. I, I sort of turned on religion and just decided I was an atheist for a while in my 20s. But I always knew that there was something more. And I always knew that I, I came to understand in my teens and 20s that I had something a little different than a lot of people had. But I wanted to be one of the cool kids, so I kept it hidden. Mm. And that carried on into my 20s and even my 30s. But by the time I was in my 30s, I was going to see psychics fairly regularly just to understand what was happening with me. Why mm. I have this knowing that other people don't seem to have. And I had a psychic uh, in my mid thirties tell me that I was a channel. And she told me that I needed to listen to Abraham. And she brought out this binder that it was like uh, cassette tapes. And this was, uh, this was in the 2000s. So it was really late to have cassette tapes around, but she had these cassette tapes and she said, you need to listen to Abraham. Well, I thought it sounded biblical and I didn't want any part of it. I didn't want to be a channel. I thought it was weird. <laughs> And I kept it hidden and I went on through life and I got to about age 40. And at age 40, I, I came to this realization that from my poor childhood, knowing I had manifested a beautiful home, beautiful cars and clothes and travel and all of this material stuff, but I still wasn't happy mm. that my knowing of, of my ability to create the life that I wanted was solely focused on material things and money. Mm. And I was in a loveless relationship and a 300 pound body and, I just wasn't a happy person at all. I didn't really have any friends. I didn't love myself. My mother uh, had cut me off for the last 20 years of my life. She didn't speak to me at all. Uh, when I came out to her as a, as a gay person in my early 20s, she hung up on me. I waited a year to try to reconnect with her. And that was it. She never spoke to me again. So for the rest of her life, we didn't have a relationship. So I had all of that to overcome, the mental, physical, father disappearing, uh, and I soothed it with, with material things and food and wine and, and, and alcohol. Can I, and can I stop? I'd like to stop because I just really want to acknowledge and I want other people to acknowledge that are listening and watching this, that you could, and you haven't, use this as your story to stay in the state of pain and suffering and victim. Oh, sure. I could sit here and say what a victim I am and how horrible it was. That's right. and, you because know, you've, got a, yeah. you've got enough, like you've got enough of, they're, they're, they're pretty decent stories, what you've shared. There's a lot to overcome. And so one of my biggest things when people say, but I had this or this has happened is, but there are people that have experienced more tragedy, ongoing tragedy, trauma that have overcome it. So did you, was there ever a point where you would say oh, you lived in that state of victimhood or was there always because of this? I think so. I, I yeah. think in my 30s, I was, in parts of my life, I kept myself in that victim space and yeah. I was soothing that victimhood with cars and clothes and houses mm. and travel. Mm. And I think that that was present, even though I understood law of attraction, my application of law of attraction and my knowing, if you will, 
was solely focused on money equals happiness, yeah, right. yep. material things equal mm. happiness, five star travel mm. equals happiness. Mm. You know, that's that was the the zone that I was in. Mm. It was very misguided, but now I see the perfection of it. That holding myself in that space not only created the the negative things aspects of my childhood, but then moved into adulthood, and I ended up in a relationship with someone who cheated on me repeatedly and even contracted HIV outside of our relationship. And, and lived off of me essentially, because I made most of the money. So that was my experience as an adult that I attracted to myself as a result of my childhood. So I finally broke free mm -hmm. of the victim vibe by finding appreciation for all of that stuff. And from the time I had what I would call my official awakening, I, it's kind of, the, all of these spiritual terms are kind of funny to me, <laughs> but there was a time that I began meditating mm. and I had an energy awakening within my body that is undeniable. And since that time, it really, it changed me, me profoundly to where I went off on this path of really starting to embrace my spiritual side. Mm. And the Abraham teachings sort of came back around to me years after I was told to listen to them in such a magical way that I could no longer ignore them. And I started really consuming a lot of the Abraham material and it was music to my ears for a while. And then I got to the point to where I realized, well, there's other things that I'm not getting from Abraham. And mm -hmm. I went back inward. And when I went inward, I got a different set of tools. And that doesn't mean that there's anything bad or wrong with Abraham. It means that for me, I needed to create a different set of tools for the challenges that I was having that the Abraham experience was no longer serving me. Mm -hmm. So the positive of Abraham for me was that it's a beautiful message. It's absolutely all accurate. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the the teachings that, that Esther delivers, if you are all familiar with Abraham, I'm assuming you might be. If not, you can check it out. It made channeling very palatable for me. Mm -hmm. It made it seem okay to do that. And it was, it was like stereo is exactly what I was getting. Mm -hmm. But for me in my life, there were things that I wasn't able to change with that get into the vortex, get happy, go up, go up in vibration, and that's it message, I knew that I had to go clean up all this gunk <laughs> from my past mm. because it all existed down there in lower vibration. And no matter how much meditating and appreciating and vortex inhabiting I had, all of that stuff when polarity took my vibe down, it was all waiting for me down mm. there. So I created the set of tools that I now call TIA, T-Y-A, mm. that allows you to clean up all of that lower vibrational stuff and to fully appreciate the vibrational flow, which includes going down into lower vibration. But you, you eliminate your triggers and you allow a more consistent source connection and you set intentions for your life in such a way that you raise your default vibration. When you raise your default vibration, that's when your life really changes. Mm -hmm. Because you have a vibration that you, we've all created our vibration which creates our reality. And our vibration has been created by the sum of our life experiences, both positive and negative. Mm. And you can read books and listen to podcasts and watch YouTube videos and do all of these things. But until you do work over a period of time to really do all of these things to raise your vibration over a period of time, you're not going to move your default. You're going to go up for a weekend. You're going to go to a weekend retreat or a seminar or read a book and be fired up and you're going to change your life. It's amazing information. And maybe some aspects do shift. Mm. But the big life shift happens when you start working these four things that we teach all together as your lifestyle. Mm. That's what changes mm. you. I feel really emotional listening to you. It's really, it's, which I'm cool with, but I'm like, wow, I think because it's, it, when I hear something that is true, my soul knows it's true, like there's a ringing. And I, I, for me, I experience emotion. And so what you've just, what you've just spoken about, I'm not even gonna remember because I was so connected to the words, was it's all about man, it's all about our energy, it's all about our frequency and our vibration. That is it. Yes. And, and the managing it is not just being in high vibration all the time because you can't be. No. Because polarity is going to drag you down. But when polarity drags you down a little bit, you can acknowledge it and notice it and appreciate it mm. and work on eliminating the triggers that sort of connect. And, and I always use the visual of the spiral. Mm. And the reason that we meditate is, is to reach this, this little sliver of space called neutrality where we're clearing our minds so much that the natural source connection that's always there is realized. 
Mm-hmm. That's all meditation is. That's the only purpose of meditation is that. Because when you get to that space of little thought and that inner connection that's always there becomes realized by you, it's like a Wi-Fi connection that's mm-hmm. always there. We just haven't mm-hmm. turned off. Then that source connection, which is pure positive energy, actually takes you and can guide you up into higher and higher vibration where joy, clarity, and abundance all reside. The solution to everything is up there. But inevitably, polarity is going to take that vibration down from time Mm. to time. And when it goes down, if we have these negative things, this transgressor energy, that energy is going to grab us. And that energy has been defined as as even, you know, evil and satanic and Mm. all these things. But for most of us, it's not that. Most of us, it is doubt and fear Mm. and envy and depression, even if it goes far enough. And we get stuck down there. And we get stuck down there because we let our thoughts run away and we're down in that space. And you said it brilliantly. I always say that you're intoxicated down there. You're not your same being. What did you said it earlier? And it was so perfect. (laughs) <laughs> that you're, you're in a different state of being. The, the way you said it, I'm going to go back and, 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 and write it down because it was perfect. You are in a different state of being mm. when you're in low vibration mm. and you can't even remember what it's like to be up when you're down there. Mm, 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 and, I, and I do liken it to being intoxicated. Those mm. of you that have uh, ever had too much to drink, you're not <laughs> rational. You're not the same person. You're suddenly fearless. You think mm. you can do anything. Your judgment is, cl- is definitely cloudy. You think you can drive a car, but you can't and you shouldn't. Mm. But that's what happens when you're down there. You have poor judgment. Your, your, your fear is released, but not necessarily in a good way. And you're, you're a different state of being. Well, being down in low vibration is the same thing. That's why people get into this hopelessness and fear and mm. doubt and worry and all of this stuff. And a lot of us hold ourselves down there unnecessarily for an inordinate amount of time instead of learning about it and appreciating the flow of it and just acknowledging, hey, I'm a little DTS. We call it DTS for down this far. I'm a little DTS. I like that. It's okay. I'm going to just work on moving myself out of here. And it's not about trying to, to race back up the spiral mm. because that tends to be counterproductive because then you start beating yourself up for being down. That just makes it worse. So this vibrational flow, I would love for every person on the planet to love the, to learn about the vibrational flow. That's my life's work is to really teach about the vibrational flow, what polarity really is. It's not to be feared. It's not to be something that you totally eradicate. But when you appreciate the vibrational flow and you come to understand the nature of your obstacles and you come to a place where you can actually meet them in joy, then you really start to change your life because you're not sticking yourself down there. You're solving those problems and you're actually expanding in the solving of the problems. Mm. So um, just a little share for you, because you probably don't know my story, but I love that because, you know, I, I experienced, I had an eating disorder for 20 years and it was bulimia. So it was dark and it was, you know, there was lots of shame and fear and complete disconnect. And I was down, I didn't even know anything else existed. But when people say, oh, wow, that was a long time. I'm like, it's perfect because I get the appreciation and the wisdom from that experience. And when you said before about your, the joy comes from the, from synchronistic moments when you actually meet somebody and you have that experience, I welled up again because for me that spoke directly to my heart and my soul because having been so disconnected now I know what it feels like to be deeply connected with another person and for it to happen so instantly so you know it again it's a polarity I had to experience that to know what I wanted and to expand to into the joy of having these connections so I think you know it's a really great what a what an incredible purpose to have to, to be wanting this for everyone, to, to, for people to understand this and get this and work with it. I love it. Yeah, the, 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 the tools changed me so profoundly. And I had ended up in, in a very high paying job. And I didn't love the job, but I love the money. I love the lifestyle that came along with it. But I got to the point where I couldn't not share this with the world anymore. Mm-hmm. I just couldn't. Mm-hmm. I had to sort of come out of the closet again as, as a spiritual teacher. And I started a podcast. And when I started the podcast, everything just started shifting very quickly. And I ended up within just a, less than six months of starting the podcast, I quit my job. And I quit my job with no plan, no parachute, no business plan, nothing. My only intention was to share this with the world. And since that time, I I published a book, The Stream, Eternal Wisdom for a Better Mm -hmm. Life, 
I've got a second book uh, that will be published probably in the next year. We're still finishing it up right now. And I've started a, a boot camp program where I actually teach these things in a concentrated 12-week environment. It's a lot of fun. We have a lot of great transformational testimonials from it. It's showing the world that these things actually do work. And every single person that's joined my boot camp, that's gotten in and done the work that they're supposed to do and graduated has transformed their lives forever mm. because of, of learning these tools. And they see the changes in their lives while they're in it. Mm. I, I've seen dramatic shifts within just a few weeks of mm. learning this stuff and applying mm. it. So it's really transformative. And it's something that works with any belief system because there's no dogma to it. There's no rules or worship or cult-like stuff at all. It's simply a mindset process that is spiritual in nature, but we strip away all of the human created spiritual tools and it, it really turns you, it's a human created tool in that I co-created it with the stream's teachings, mm -hmm. but it's all about going inward, going inward and cleaning up your transgressor energy, learning what polarity is all about, learning where you are on, to, to really pay attention to your spiral all the time, mm -hmm. learning to set intention for yourself every day for what is going on in your day segment by segment. And it sounds tedious, but over time it becomes a lifestyle. It's just how you live your life. And there's so much benefit in it. You adapt it as just your way of being mm -hmm. and it really shifts you. Mm -hmm. And you, you see the results in your life. And the nicest thing about it is it gives you this higher perspective of not just your life, but all of humanity. And the best way to describe that is people liken it to a, a spiritual awakening. Mm. It's, it's, I, I'm not guaranteeing anybody a spiritual awakening. Everyone has their own independent experience, but it really wakes you up and being able to zoom out to your higher perspective mm. and see the perfection of imperfection in the world. And then suddenly mm. the atrocities of the world are not something that you desire to ever happen again or for anyone. It's not viewing it in that type of appreciation. It's a deep understanding of it that allows you to make sense of it. And when you make sense of it, finally, you're at peace with yourself and the world. You're not pushing against anything. And when we get to that space of high vibration appreciation of everything, then we really do have the tools to start solving things. We don't have to have a lot of the things that the transgressor energy on this planet does not have to be. Mm. And we have the power to change it, but pushing against and, and, and being angry about it and staying in anger and then forgetting about it when the anger abates mm. tends to be what we do. And that's why we have things that just continue as ongoing problems that don't get solved. But there are other things that we do solve. And we solve the other things by noticing an annoyance and going to our creative space and creating a solution for it, creating technology. You know, no one's protesting and angry that we don't have the internet or don't have, you know, Zoom video to communicate <laughs> the way that we're viewing it right now. So therefore there was no, there was no negative energy mm. around it. It was just something that someone thought up as consciousness that wouldn't this be cool to have this way to communicate globally in real time? How can we do that? Let's create that. That was created in a relatively short amount of time considering, you know, when, when I was a child, this was just a pipe dream and here we are. <laughs> so mm. think about the fact that we can create in every space that way you can end hunger and child abuse and, and spousal abuse and, and self-loathing and, and a lot of illness and, you know, trafficking and all of these things that we want to change racism, all of these things that we want to change, all of it can be solved but it's not going to be solved by simply being angry about it and demonizing the perpetrator, if you will, and staying there. Mm. That solves nothing. That's something that I get on social media very often. You know, how can you be so positive when blah, 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 blah is going on? And my response usually is, okay, what's your solution? And that's mm. always the end of the conversation. Mm. There's never a solution. They're just mm. angry that I'm positive and teaching law of attraction when they're not taking time to fully comprehend it. And I offer them the opportunity and they don't want to hear it. They're, you know, th that's not where they are vibrationally. Mm. So I loved what you shared before about um, taking yourself into a higher vibration and into a higher perspective. And I see that like a bird's eye. Like I love taking myself above a situation and seeing my small self, my human self, and looking from a higher perspective. So how, so essentially for anyone watching, and, and so what I, the question I want to ask you, I've always... I've been told that I'm a channel, I, I, but I've, I, I don't think I am. But are we all? 
Are we all? Can we well, all? What I have coming to me in the stream says that energy that is the stream is flowing to everyone. Mm. And it's not a he or an it or a we or a she or any of mm. that stuff. It is consciousness, eternal consciousness mm. that powers all creation. Mm. So it is flowing to everybody. I don't believe that everyone is intending to channel the way that I do. Mm. I, I think it's something that you've really got to be ready for because it's it seems fun and cool. But there's a lot of other things that come along with that. Mm. I, I think everyone has intuition. Yeah. And your high vibration intuition, which when you are in a state of joy or you're really relaxed and these brilliant ideas pop into your mind from nowhere, usually when you're doing something that is, is taking your focus down to something small, like going on a long drive or gardening or even taking a shower or if you're into ironing clothes, that's very cathartic for a lot of people. That low thought activity is a form of meditation. Mm. And that's why when you're in the shower, you get these great ideas. Because Absolutely. you're connected to source in that state. <laughs> Every that's my place. I get it. Sure. I, 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 sure. I, I, There's I, a magical quality of water for sure that 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 aids in in in, in amping mm. up the connection. But it's just the low thought activity. You shower every day, or I assume you do. You shower every day, <laughs> yes. and you're 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 doing the same things. It takes some thought to do what you're doing, mm. but not a lot of thought. So it's taking your thought process down to this task. You're relaxed. The water is flowing. You're in the perfect scenario to allow your natural source connection to emerge. Mm. And that natural source connection, you are channeling source in that space. Mm. And that's where your brilliant ideas are coming mm. from. Mm. At my best, that's where I created Taya. That's where I created the idea of the stream. Mm. You know, it's, it's consciousness is coming to me, but they didn't come forth and say, we are the stream. <laughs> we are flowing. You know, it wasn't like that at all. You know, I asked for a name years and years ago. And I, I, I wanted to know my guide. I went through this this thing where I went to a psychic and asked the name of your guide. I got the name Philip. So I, I, I went through a period of years thinking my guide's name was Philip. And then when this started flowing on a deeper level, I when I got to the point where I could really sort of have a conversation with the stream, the com inner conversation was, well, who's Philip? Where's Philip? Well, we're not Philip. That was kind of bullshit. You know, that was what you were ready for. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't say that, but it was just funny. It was like total knowing. Uh, that's mm. what you were ready for at that time was to perceive an energetic being that was human-like that was your guide. Mm. And and really, it's not that way. The energetic being is an amalgam of, of, of creative energy mm. that is available to everyone. But you perceive it as guides and masters and angels and all these things, and there's nothing wrong with it, but we're humanizing it. Mm. And... The, the name, the stream just came to me. And then I called the podcast, the stream of David. Mm. And that's what it is. It's a stream of consciousness. Mm. And it's a stream of consciousness on different levels. It's available to everyone. Mm. Now, whether you want to choose to, to speak it and write it the way that I do, that for me took some time to teach myself how to do that. Mm. For Esther Hicks, it was this magical thing. Mm. But I didn't have that experience. But she completely, in my opinion, from what she's talked about, uh, she suppressed it for many, many, many years. And then mm. she kind of got into that same space of wanting to go see people to understand what she was all about. Mm. And in her coming to understand it, she had this supernatural experience that she started speaking it. Mm. So I didn't have that. I was aware of it very early and I didn't suppress it. I just hit it, which was a little different. Mm. So when I was ready to share it, I had to train myself and training myself to write it was fairly easy. You get into a high vibrational state, mm. set an intention and, and the writing just starts. But the speaking of it was something I trained myself to do over a period of, of many months, if not years. And I did it into my uh, iPhone in, in my car in the basement of my building in the parking garage because I didn't want anybody to hear me. I thought it was so weird. I didn't want anybody to hear it. And when I was trying to force it, mm. it was really weird and forced. And then when I just sort of let go and relaxed into it, it started just flowing out. Mm. I love the distinction you've made around that because, oh yeah, I, yeah I, so can I ask a question? So channeling as opposed to intuition, what's the difference? Uh, intuition is channeling. That's what I thought. I just, Same thing. I, just for anyone watching and because that question popped up, it is, so yeah. when you hear us say that uh, that everyone is a channel, everyone is has a source connection, everyone has their own version of the mm. stream coming to mm. them, everybody does. Mm. And when you're at your highest vibrational standpoint, mm. you, you're, when you're up in joy, that is flowing. And mm. the stream's advice is get into high vibration 
and remove fear, which also allows you to remove judgment, and you will get clarity on any subject if you take fear and judgment out. Anything. <laughs> if you remove fear, you know what your next path should be. Mm. Even if it's scary, take the fear out of it. That is your clarity. Now choose to do it or not. But if you do it, there's no getting it wrong. Mm. Even if it's even if you have obstacles and roadblocks along the way, that's that vibrational flow that we talk about. Mm. Your vibration is up. You're creating something new. Let's just talk about a business. Anyone that's ever read about the creation of these massive companies, Apple, for instance, I've, I've done a lot of reading about Steve Jobs and the creation of Apple. You know, how many times did the company almost go bankrupt, you know, and he was fired and he was brought back and all mm. of this, this negative stuff happened along the way. Well, that's a vibrational flow. Mm. The vibrational flow exists to create a more perfect version of. So what happens mm. is if you set out with an idea, that idea exists as thought, as consciousness forever. Mm -hmm. And that idea, you can take that idea and begin creating the idea. And what happens more times than not, people begin creating their idea from high vibration. They believe they can do it. They're putting their money into it. They whip themselves up into the state where they're going to do it. And then the first obstacle arrives. And, mm -hmm. you know, a nice percentage of people at that point throw in the towel and quit and go back to their day job, yep. right? Then some people go further than that and they allow this vibrational flow of positive and negative because they're listening to their inner knowing that I know this isn't working the way that I thought it was going to work, but there's something here and I know that. And the people that keep forging ahead and forging ahead and forging ahead are the ones that become the Apple and the Google and the Amazon mm. and everything else because they just keep going no matter what. And I can tell you in my own existence, since I left that mid six figure job and, and doing this to make a living, I've had the same thing. I've had times that I'm just like, oh my gosh, you know, what am I doing? And, and all this, you know, stuff would uh, kind of drop in. And then I stop myself and remember, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> We're in low vibration right now. Mm -hmm. We're not going to listen to ourselves in low vibration. My job right now is not to try to figure out solving this <laughs> dilemma that I'm faced with in business. My job is to go raise my vibration. Yep. And when I do, <laughs> then the solution flows. I've had two and a half years of that now with no real, you know, plan or backing or anything. It's just sharing the stream in different ways and allowing all of these things uh, that we've created just to manifest. Mm -hmm. We have guided meditations, we have a book and we have a boot camp, and we have coaching sessions and we have tons of stuff that we do that's free and it's all good. You can learn it for free or you can pay and participate. It's all good. It's all there to help all of those that are ready for it. And mm -hmm. the people that pay for it love the fact that they're paying for it and getting something out of it. Mm -hmm. The people that aren't ready to pay for it, there's still plenty of information available. Mm -hmm. Which I know because, you know, I went down a bit of a rabbit hole and listened to lots of your your free resources and, and read your book, which was amazing. And it's actually going to be on my website in my resource book section. And all, all the ways that people can connect with you will be underneath this conversation and it'll be, uh, it's also a podcast now. I think since I last spoke to you, that's now launched. So it'll be available on my podcast. But um, what I loved, what you said was so true. And I'm, I, I'm experiencing that too firsthand in building this show and this platform is to raise the frequency of the planet. And, but I'm, ex I'm experiencing the obstacles and in the past, I'd be out of there because I had a belief that I failed at everything. So I'm having to, I think that's great though. What a great nugget to take away that when we find ourselves in that space, that what the, the, the solution is to raise our vibration. Yeah, because the obstacle is our creation and it exists so that we can build a better version. Yeah. Every time I've had an obstacle in my business, my life in general, it actually catapulted me to a higher level that allowed me to create something even better. And that's, that's what negative is all about at its best. And that's why the stream says they do not judge positive and negative the way that we do. In their perspective, it's all positive because the things that we judge as negative are the launch pad for more positive. Wow. And, and one thing that, we, that the stream teaches that was just such, it just blew me away when I fully got this from them, is that we judge things from an ego perspective as this is wrong, this is bad, this mm. is evil, this is awful. And we judge ourselves and then we judge other people. We judge the experiences of other people. But something they said to me really rang true that we're all independent strands of soul consciousness and we're all 
on this sort of eternal march more and more into the core of source energy, becoming more one with source all the time, which expands source, which expands the universe, multiverse, if you will. Mm. And in this march, we are actually seeking higher and higher and higher degrees of contrast, meaning negative, because of the experience that it will offer in the expansion and the potential of overcoming it. So when we judge someone who is born into wealth and privilege is blessed in our planet as humanity, and we judge the one that is born into poverty as cursed, we are completely in reverse of universal law. The one that is choosing the difficult path, even if that life path is cut short in just a few years, that is a more advanced strand of consciousness coming for the higher degree of contrast. And they use the example of these children that are born with terminal cancer and they live to be, you know, four or five years of age and their whole life is perhaps spent at a doctor's office or a hospital. And everyone says how enlightened they were, mm. how beautiful their soul was, how at peace they were. Think of the, the soul that manifested and chose that path. And we see tangible evidence of it in our world. And yet we still judge that as it's awful. It was terrible. It was so bad. It was, you know, and even the parents very often receive enlightenment from having had that experience of that child. Yep. No parent wants to lose a child, but there is an opportunity for expansion in that experience that you do not understand. And I do not understand unless we have actually been there and, and it's not for us to judge. So at our best, we're understanding that everyone is here on their own unique path, their own unique journey. And we have to be allowing of all of those unique journeys, even if we don't understand them, even if we think they're horrific, because the pushing against, the, the demonizing of it actually creates more of it, whereas the appreciation of it is the actual solution to it. <laughs> uh, uh, my mouth is like, uh, there's nothing to say from that. That is. That was gold, David. That was pure gold. And I know what I've just said will be the experience of anyone listening that's really listened to what you just shared. Wow. As somebody that was so addicted to judgment, oh, my goodness, I've grown up in that space. I just got the biggest download, the biggest aha then. Unbelievable. Thank you. I could talk to you. <laughs> I say this sometimes, but I could talk to you for hours. Now I'm like, now I wish we had more time so I could so I could ask you to connect to the stream and ask questions. But we'll have to have another conversation. I was going to say you can. I'll, I'll come back. There, there's a really good vibe about you and your audience. Um, we can just we can schedule time to come back, and it can be yep. more of the stream. <laughs> Amazing. But when I'm at my best, that they're flowing through me. When I'm in high vibration, and, and I channeled another show today, and it was it was really. Um, really just good stuff that was coming out of it and, and the people that were on the show were really blown away so this has just been this high vibration day that mm. just flowed perfectly this is the end of my day it's 5 30 here it's still uh, what day is it here tuesday yeah so this is just perfect um uh, you know for me the the perfect way to wrap up my day mm. thank you so much I loved that. <laughs> I love being in conversation with you, David, and I'm going to love being in conversation with the stream next time or asking questions. Yeah, that's the that's stream. a different experience, but yeah, it's, yeah, I yeah, think yeah, you'll yeah, really yeah. vibe with it. I imagine. So I didn't really want to talk about, um, I don't want to go into um, Tyre and the four pillars. People can connect with you and discover more because we'll have all your links and how people can connect with you um, to, to, to explore, to, you know, if, they, if people are curious um, to find out about Tyre Boot Camp. You're, you know, you stream regularly. You've got a number of Facebook groups. Can you just mention you've got the stream of David? Yeah, I, I am this. We are the, I should say we are, we are the stream of David just about everywhere. On Facebook, though, we do have a group called Taya Global Awakening, T Y A. That's what I'm talking And that's, of. I go to greater depth there than, than anywhere. Uh, the, the Facebook group is a great place to come and interact and be on live with the stream and really start learning this Taya practice. Uh, is, that's a great place to do it. So, T Y A global awakening and Taya stands for trust your abundance mm. because I could do a whole episode just on the word trust because it really, everything does come down to, to being able to trust the universal process of creation, which includes positive and negative. Mm. And that's the message that I really want to get out there. Life really changes when you start embracing all that. Mm. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> um, well, yeah, thank you.
No, no more words, just deep gratitude. And you've got such a generous and beautiful heart. And I love the mission. And I really love that that what you're doing is you're using the messages and what you're receiving from the stream to then ground it in the practice and what you're offering and, and the tools through Tyre. I think that that for me is why it's so extraordinary. Because we can hear I needed to take the, there's a lot of people that channel, but for me, I needed to take the teachings and, and apply them in a practical way. Mm. I'm very solution oriented. Mm. And I wanted solutions like, okay, here are the teachings and, and the teachings are everything and they're eternal. And there, there is so much wisdom there. But how do we take all of that and, and sort of bring it into our lives in ways that will solve problems for us yeah. in our lives, mm. and as a collective of humanity, mm. and that's where time came from. Yeah, which is beautiful. So people can actually transform because the tools. Oh you've yeah, used. if you go to my YouTube channel, I have a whole playlist of, and it's just we, we're way behind in editing these days because I'm doing so many other things. Uh, of people who transform their lives with with the bootcamp program mm. and significant transformations, you know, not you know, money, businesses, um, relationships, uh, having children when they were told they weren't able to have children, solving custody battles, uh, relationships, marriages, divorces out of bad relationships. Uh, gosh, you name it, mm. and, and we have it at this point. Miraculous healing. We have a woman who had terminal cancer. I read uh, her. Two, two mm. cancer patients that had pretty dire diagnosis that are thriving today. Uh, it, it, it gives you a foundation to solve anything in your life, but the healing and the solving is all internal work. Mm. This gives you the tools to tap into your own inner power. Mm. It's not me or the stream healing anyone or anything like that. Mm. It's, it's tapping into what was there all along. Because it's all there, isn't it? It's all there. It's all there. I, I've seen it. I'm just amazed at what I've seen. One of the most incredible stories we have from boot camp is a woman whose son was murdered. And oh, for five I, years, she oh. suffered as the, the mother of a murdered son and couldn't take it anymore. And she started listening to my podcast and she came into boot camp. And I asked her if she was ready to find appreciation for her son's journey and even forgiveness, if not appreciation for his murder. And she said she was. I thought, okay, you get it. <laughs> because if you're not ready for that, you're not ready for this. And she got it and she did. And the amazing result of that is her, uh, the guy that murdered her son uh, was a serial killer and he murdered her son in one state and then went to another state, committed another murder and got uh, in the States, in the United States and was captured there. And so he was tried and convicted there and they had to extradite him back to, to where she was to, for him to be tried for her son's murder. And it took five years to do that. And right as she was graduating my boot camp, that extradition finally happened. Wow. And she yes. had to meet the murder of her son in court face to face. And certainly it was not a good experience, but it was an experience that she could handle. Mm -hmm. she, she went in and was able to do that and moved on, moved through the experience, went to dinner with her family, went home in appreciation of her son's journey and dreamed about him all night long. <gasps> I mean, yeah. Yeah. I'm speechless again. Well, that's why I do what I do. That's what's that, possible. I, I love to use these extreme stories just because people that are listening that say, you know, I had this happen to me and I'm never going to be able mm. to appreciate that and get over it. I use the extreme story to jolt people into realizing that we have the power to, to view anything from a higher perspective. Mm. And when we view it from a higher perspective, we detune its power over us. And that's what this work is. It's not about forgetting something that happened in our past. And, and as far as appreciation goes, it's kind of a radical term, but it's more of understanding. But when you understand it and you get it and you, you detune it, so it's no longer haunting you, it's no longer active in your lower vibration, and it really changes your state of being. So now she's able, and of, of course, she's always going to be changed from what happened but she's a much more joyful being now with these tools and continues, I'm still in touch with her, continues this work and continues to be a joyful being. Missing her son, of course, but not missing him in the way that held her in that low vibrational state where she was actually separated from his energy and his now state, mm. which is high vibration. Mm. Thank you. What a beautiful place to end. Until next time, because they're definitely going to be next time. <laughs> I appreciate you having me on. And I appreciate everybody sticking around and listening to this. Uh, mm. it's, it's, it's deep stuff, but it really changes you. So I, I love being able to share it. Thank you, David.
Have a gorgeous night, the rest of your night. <laughs> you too, thank you. Bye. I know it was a long conversation, but it was worth it, wasn't it? I mean, wow, I couldn't stop talking to him, his wisdom and what he offered us, simple ways to actually transform our lives. If you enjoyed this conversation or if you have any questions or comments, I love answering them. I love reading what you took out of these conversations. Please pop them beneath this video. And as always, so much love and I look forward to sharing more conversations with you.